Normally, a ship has maybe a couple of hundred tons of water in the pools. Here we said that we will have something like between 15, 500 and 1,000 tons of water. So we started by thinking about that. We don't know what we are going to do up there. But we said that one of the areas which we really are going to design in a totally different way are the open decks. There needs to be totally different dimensionality, much more space, different functions, different areas which are appealing for different type of people. So really being able to actually make sure that the, the ship underneath is able to carry that. We knew we wanted water, water everywhere. So we started there and then we built the rest of the ship around that. We really thought through how can we maximize different types of water, different types of pools to make sure that we have water in every area. We know that People go on vacation and their most beloved vacations are water-centric. And so with Icon of the Seas, we really wanted to think about delivering unrivaled water experiences in a bolder, bigger way. And so we've done some things new and different than we have before. One of the interesting stories about the design of Icon of the Seas is that we had actually this idea of doing quite a number of water slides from the very beginning, and we actually started with five. The naming process and the design process happened to be hand in hand with one another. So the category six came about also with the decision of adding a sixth water slide at the same time. And so that's when everything really started to click and we got the rest of the excitement and the rest of the features, the rest of the experiences that are gonna be within the water slides and around the water slides to complete the whole park. The water slides on Icon will be so complex and so large and we are trying to now build it separately from the ship and have it barged onto the ship next to it. So I think that there will be so many intricacies, so many complex ways of getting everything that we want on the ship but it is kind of the Royal Caribbean way as well, right? We, we knew we would take this risk by making these as complicated as we did, but we also knew we would find a way to get these slides onto the ship. What's really interesting about the entirety of the open decks is how much space we have integrated from bow to stern. So it's actually really a three deck high open deck experience that has a whole variety of different zones within it and all together it's an unprecedented amount of space. We have 62% more water surface area so we really concentrated on the water not only in Thrill Island where you would expect it with the water park but also we concentrated on the water in the main pool deck area and all of the, the rest of the open decks. So we actually used two different towers within the open decks to have the water slide experience. So with this, we were able to design longer slides, faster slides. In order to deliver on category six, we wanted, we knew we wanted six slides. We needed to be very conscious about the weight and how we would add the weight to the ship, how we would handle it structurally so that we could work with the main structural elements and components that are were inherently already in the skeleton of the ship so we didn't have to go back to extreme re-engineering. Um, we had to be very cognizant of the funnel area with respect to wind and wind turbulence because we wanted not only six water slides, but we wanted a lot of water, we wanted a lot of speed, we wanted a lot of height, and we really need, did not want to compromise on any one of those things. So we had to bring a lot of experts in to work with us in order to make sure that we could design this in a way that it was going to be technically sound to execute and ensure that it didn't compromise our ability to maintain our delivery dates. So this is a big puzzle on a ship and usually takes probably a couple of years to do that. It requires huge collaboration between the designers, the architects and naval architects, the people who build the ship and the people who operate the ship. It takes a lot of time, takes a lot of process and ability for people to jointly work on and creating something uh, balanced, which has not been done in the, in before, but which is very well anchored in the history and everything we have learned. We had a weight reservation, we had a water reservation, we always have to work within certain boundaries, we make trade-offs. 
we study what we think guests are gonna love. We look at our brand DNA. We look at what really works for us on land and other ships. And really it was working closely with all of the partners throughout the company, including our site office, to make sure that we could push the boundary as really far as we could.